I'm Blaine Reed. I'm the IPM agent for Hell Swisher in Floyd County. And with me here is uh, Tyler Mays. He is in Gaines Terry in Yoakum Counties. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, how to scout and uh, make decisions for ligus and um, possibly the difference between uh, ligus and plant bug in cotton. We're here at the Lubbock Experiment Station and we're going to be talking to Ligus. Ligus are uh, true bugs in order of Hemiptera. They'll take their piercing sucking mouth part. They will stab uh, fruit on uh, cotton and other host plants. Uh, they're going to be uh, feeding on those. Of course the cotton will then uh, bore us a square up to several sizes and they will do damage on uh, bowls up to 350 heat units. Ligus are general fruit feeders. They feed on a lot of different hosts. Uh, they're going to be very, very mobile. They're going to move through uh, cotton, uh, through weeds. Alfalfa, one of their preferred hosts, uh, they're noted as to move from cotton into uh, uh, corn or, and vice versa. So uh, it's going to be real important when we go across this field to catch both adults and nymphs and of course tied with uh, the ligus threshold are going to be square drop. On the high plains we have several different species of ligus. Uh, unlike uh, down in the south where it's mostly the tarnished plant bug, we've got uh, Hesperus elysis and uh, little less and a couple other uh, uh, ligus species. Uh, species of control really doesn't matter except uh, to note that we do have the different species up here. Well, we definitely want to, uh, when we're scouting for ligus, to get across the field. Uh, these guys will often uh, lay eggs in uh, uh, patches across the field, and if we just step into one spot in the field, it's quite likely you could be missing the larger picture or just catching some edge effects. So I really like to make an arc across the whole field, walking through there, getting down at uh, random places that represent the field, and uh, calculating what I have uh, per acre when we, when we finish across the field. Uh, there's several different methods when it comes to uh, scouting for uh, ligus, uh, one of course uh, that we're all going to have to do when we calculate our square drop or conversely square retention uh, is an individual plant inspection method. Now to do this uh, exclusively for ligus we're going to need several hundred per field. So we've come up with several shortcut techniques to, to get this done without taking uh, hours and hours and hours. My preferred method is going to be uh, with a drop cloth in conjunction with plant inspections. As I walk across the field, uh, I'm going to stop, like I say, at random places, probably five, maybe ten places, field size depending. I like to get uh, two plant inspections and two drop cloths. So when we're deciding uh, which plant to use, like I say, it's going to be a random plant across the field. I like to get a plant on one side and then the other. Uh, the four, one of the first things we're going to be doing is uh, watching that plant uh, very closely to see if any of the uh, plant bugs are going to be leaving out. That's going to be flea hoppers or ligus. Uh, they are very flighty insects, especially, especially as adults. When you get a hold of the plant, you're also going to want to grab it by the base. Any of the nymphs will try to run down that plant, and if they're way is blocked, they're going to have to be on this plant and we will look on the top of the leaves, the bottom of the leaves, at the squares and any place that those little nymphs might be hiding on that plant. While we're down here on uh, looking this plant over, we're going to record the plant stage. Uh, this is going to be the oldest, most consistent square in the field. Uh, this would be about a, a quarter grown square, uh, so this, this plant would be quarter grown stage. But we're also going to be looking and counting all of the squares for a potential drop. So we've got our two plants inspected, and while we're down here, we're going to move a short distance away. We're going to spread our drop cloth out. I definitely prefer a dark colored drop cloth uh, over the white. The white on bright sunny days in West Texas can play tricks on the eyes. In addition, the little green nymphs and ligus of flea hoppers and, uh, and ligus will show up a lot better. We're going to take the full width of the drop cloth, thoroughly pop all the plants down, and we'll use this method all the way through until the field is no longer at risk for flea hoppers or ligus. We're going to take a little bit of time and look at all of the little insects that come off of the plant and any uh, piece of fruit or leaf that came off as well. Now a lot of these ligus and flea hopper nymphs can be the size of a uh, speck of grain or a sand so we're going to be looking pretty close to be sure we're catching these guys very very small when they come off. Of course be watching for adults as well. 
So the drop cloth is really, really handy for catching nymphs. But you got to be very, very careful with adults. Little things like casting your shadow on the plant can scare an adult off. For adults, it's probably better to use a sweep net. And I will resort to this if I've got a lot of square drop that looks like Ligus and I can't find them. So simple sweep net use is going to be sweep about midway through the plant with some vigor. When you're finished with your sweep nets, pull it up and see what all that sweep net has brought out. Uh, when you're calculating on a uh, per foot basis, I like to take about 20 sweeps and measure how far you're going to get your row feet done. The last method that we probably use will be a beet bucket. Uh, any beet bucket can, can make do. Uh, we can use a five gallon bucket or for real small plants, we can actually use a little Dixie cup. And a lot of research purposes, because this beet bucket will be absolute, we'll use that. We'll simply take our bucket, whatever it is, several plants in, thoroughly shake it around, and see the plants that come out. And of course, uh, uh, we can keep up with the number of plants to get a percent infested, or we can measure how much area we're covering with a bucket. So in calculating square drop, we need to calculate the total number of square sites possible, as well as the number of squares that are actually present and the number of squares that are missing. To calculate your square set, you take the total number of squares present and divide that by the total number of possible square sites. Okay, so if you find uh, ligus in the field with the appropriate number of square drop, uh, what we're going to be looking at is a threshold. What, you, what are you going to spray for? Well, if we're looking at just plant inspections, you're going to, with ligus, you're going to look about to 12 to 15 percent of infested uh, plant terminals with the square drop that Tyler described. If you're using a drop cloth method or a sweep net method, it really depends on the plant stage. Uh, about one Ligus every 2.5 uh, row feet uh, on a drop cloth this size, that would be an average about two ligus per drop cloth. That would be threshold. And then they calculate the same uh, uh, row feet for the uh, sweep net method uh, or the uh, uh, beet bucket. Now as we move later in the year the plants can tolerate more damage, the bowls will be bigger and of course the plant will get drier as we go along so that number would actually drop down to say uh, right at uh, peak bloom it might be a one ligus every 1.5 feet is what would be our decision aid tool.